People know who they're talking to. Good evening and welcome to the September 15, 2021 meeting of the Tenfield Township Traffic Commission. I would request that you join the commission for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to our National Institute. A pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag. The United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our first action item on the agenda is to review and approve the minutes of the August 12th. 2021 meeting. Are there any comments from the commissioners? I have done everything in order. I would welcome a uh, motion for approval then. So moved. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion by Mr. Bennett and a second by Mr. Weaver. 
And I call for the question, all those in favor, aye. 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 And they are approved three to zero. Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. I did add to your agenda at the very last minute a request to add something to your agenda for the Spring Valley Road post study. Yes. Um, thank you. And we'll do that under speed study reports. Is that you probably want to have a motion to add it? Uh, okay. I'll make I'll make a motion to add the uh, Spring Valley post speed um, results. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion, and where shall we add it to speed study reports? Very well. Call for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 And we have no opposition, so it will be added to the agenda. Thank you, Mrs. Schweitzer. Okay. Um, and the monthly activity report provided by the police department is the next item on the agenda. And Is that what am I looking at on the screen? This is Centerville Road, Mr. Lefebvre. Okay, this is Centerville Road speed truck studies, but this was on this is not what we've added to the agenda. This was the original item, and these are the two studies one at Nightway and the other close to Marchwood's uh, kennel, as I recall. Um, these studies indicated, if you can pull up the study, I believe the 85th percentile was in the mid thirties range to be generalizing. My my computer's a little slow bringing this up. So is mine. Hold on. <laughs> well, so is mine. If it's any consolation. <laughs> okay, here we go. I do, I do recall that one thing of note was that the number of trucks was less than 1% of the multiple vehicles that were recorded in the study. Do you help me out here? Is the one that I have up here 8 4 the first or the second one? 8 4 would be the first one, right? Okay, so that was the first one, and that was located at Knight's Lane, I believe. Yeah, Knight's Lane, which no, that one, that one's on Marchwoods. That's that's the uh, oh, yeah, does say that. Oh, there it is, Marchwoods. Okay, that was the old what we, what we did was broke Centerville Road into three different areas, right. I didn't submit the third one. See, you're going to have to talk into the microphone. Oh. Sorry. You can take it with you. I might as well just go over here. Yeah, it says that over the speed study, there were 67,375 vehicles with a daily average of 84.22. And the average speed is 35, where, and the speed limit is 25 miles per hour. That's uh, as you as you as you come down the grade northward, that is all 25 miles per hour. The 85th percentile was 39 miles per hour. Go ahead, Chief. Yeah. Do you want me to clarify anything in the report that that you that's not already documented? The only thing of significance that I can see here is that um, at some point in time, I, I don't want to get into the truck 
study at this point. Uh, that's down the road, but um, of significance for this. Tractor trailers make up less than actually 0.5% uh, of, of truck or of vehicle traffic on Central Road the entire length where there's a prohibition. Um, but one of the things that we need to look at over time is the speed changes. It goes from 45 to 35, we're starting on State Road, 45, 35, 25. So I think over time, once all these studies are done, we're gonna come up with some kind of a consistent speed along that stretch of the road. Um, this, this section uh, closer to the junior high, there, there are higher speeds in that 25 zone. Um, I wouldn't say that there's any problem with the, the Knights Lane section. And I don't think that there is on the, the furthest north section before you get to, to Harrisburg Pike. I think the results of that one, I'm still, I just got it in, but looking at it briefly before this meeting, it, it seems consistent with what's posted. Well, the 30, the 25 mile an hour past the school, I believe, is set to you know, school. And I would venture to say it's probably the most violated speed limit in the township, to my observation. But the, the facts are here that, that it's uh, average speed of 35, 10 over, with, with some up to 39. Um, the B study, which I think you were alluding to also at night um, lane, I believe that's 25 there. I don't believe no, that. There, it switches to 35, right? right well, I thought right the 35 there. switch was closer up to Knoll Road, but it's it's in between there. So I just used the, the night okay. lane as a reference. Okay. So we did one at the south, the middle, and the northern section of the roadway. So it's the speed limit is, is 25 from Marriott Avenue down around the school, and it changes at approximately Knights nice Lane a little bit further north, okay. and then it changes to 35. And then when you get over towards the hospital, uh, it remains 30 or it went down to 25 and then it goes back up to 45 further out. So I just, I don't think it's anything that you need to make a decision on today, but that, that and the whole Trump discussion is coming down the road. Um, specific to, to these two that are done would be the speeds. Um, I don't see an issue uh, through the study with that middle section, the section between Marietta Avenue and say the school where it's residential, the speed limit is 25. So there are some higher speeds in there. But again, it's, it's 35 mile an hour is the average speed. My officers can't force 25 until they get 36. So a um, significant number of the, the vehicles that are doing 35, we can't do anything about it anyway. Can you speak to the accident history or absence of accidents in this stretch? I didn't, I didn't pull that specifically, but um, I would say that I don't think that it's significant in any way along that straight stretch or even on the curves. Okay. Yes, we, we had spoken last month of deferring Centerville Road, the three studies to one comprehensive study in the future. So we're just staying in touch with this. Is any comments from the commissioners? I, um, I guess my question would be, what happens on Centerville Road that would, that would change the, the need or would have a need for the speed limit to change to, from 25 to 35. Yeah, I, I don't know. The only thing I can think is, I don't know how long those speed limits have been set, um, okay. but I would say that the portion that is currently 25 is clearly residential. Um, where it increases would be the backyards of houses rather than the frontage on the street. Right, so still, maybe that's why it was done. Um, still most of the houses from the school up to the old road, the backyards above the street rather than the fronts uh, and the driveways. So I don't know if that's why it was said. I think that's something that needs to be looked at um, holistically for that whole stretch as the hospital finishes up and they get the signs back in place. Um, that we look at that whole stretch, and I think that it would probably make sense to do that later in the year when we have the, all the studies done. Uh, a lot of that construction is wrapped up, and the sign, the, the painting's done, and then we kind of take a better look. Okay, I, I, I agree to that. The other, the other comment that made has to do with trucks, and, and again, we're going to look at this uh, down the road later. Um, uh, one speed study to the other, though, there was a fairly significant increase in the number of trucks from 51 to 70. Um, uh, overall, I think I think that there are trucks that were turning, probably turning off on the Knoll and going one way or the other on the Knoll Road. Um, 
maybe to go out towards Stony Battery or to deliver in that area. But the difference was where they, where they were placed. And when I get the, the third study, I think it's, uh, I, I won't say, I think it's pretty comparable to the, the middle section. So without having cameras set up, I wouldn't have any idea where those extra 20 trucks were going. Okay. I mean, I mean, it would only make sense to me that clearly they, they're turning off before they hit the, the southern section. So they're either either going down this way, which there are uh, businesses down there where they could deliver. They may be going out. No, I, I just don't know. Okay. We would have to set up some kind of a, a device like we did on Bowman and Church. Mr. Weaver? Uh, any questions, any comments? Anyone from the audience having anything about Centerville Road on their agenda? Mrs. Jacobson, can you come forward, please? Yeah, um, you know, as you know, my backyard is on Centerville Road um, between um, Chapel Forge and Nolt. Um, and I know we you mentioned before last meeting something about local deliveries. I don't know what the definition of local deliveries are is, and you know, living there, my neighbors, we talk and we see the trucks. Like the other day, three big tractor trailers right after they were following each other, coming from going north on Centerville. So I mean, they're there all the time, but you know. The study, the July study, I think the study should be done after Labor Day. You know, I mean, there's different stages of the study, I get it. But I think they also should be done in the fall. You know, because summer, everyone's on vacation, truckers are on vacation, you know, places are, you know, it's a different atmosphere in July than it is in the fall. Um, so that's just something that I think now I didn't get a chance, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do like sit and watch them coming down the hill. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna do that. I have to put it on my calendar so when I get up and say, okay, I gotta do that today. Um, and I'm going to do that. And when is this check this truck study gonna be done, or what are you looking at completion time? Well, I, I don't think we've established that yet, but, okay. but you know, I, I do agree with you, you know. Uh, on the, the local delivery issue. There's no one making any deliveries in your area of Centerville Road. Any, any of the deliveries that are being made either to the school, I would think, or some uh, business on this same road. So, um, you know, and, and you know, it should, so it should be, it, you know, it, it should be limited. I also think that on some level, perhaps there was some impact on State Road being closed over the last uh, year or so uh, that, li that limited uh, truck activity to, to some extent. Could all things that we have to look at. And, right. And, and we'll look at. No, I, I know, I know. Um, but, you know, you know, I just think that, and my neighbors, we know that there's a truck issue. An issue, we see how many, because we're there all the time. You know, I'm in my backyard, my neighbors are in it, we're all different times. My next door neighbor is like OCD in his yard. So, you know, he gets the full picture 24 <laughs> yeah. seven. Um, it, it would be great if you had pictures, video, I will. And, and, and personal accounts. Right. I mean, we, we, have, we have the tools here to, to make an evaluation and we'll use those, but we'll also take into consideration anything that you might, you okay. might bring forward. Yeah, we'll do that. I'll get a team together. But also, you know, a lot of it is after 11, 12 o'clock at night. You know, these, they come barreling down Centerville Road and, you know, you hear them. <laughs> you hear them. And, you know, that's, you know, my next door neighbor doesn't work in his yard, unfortunately, at like one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> um, but, I mean, so, you know, it's a, it's a constant thing. It's not just like business hours, you know. Um, so I just want to make that point. Um, you know, as far as the speed limits, yeah, it's, it's an issue, you know, when you, the school, you know, I've checked out other school areas and some, like, some of the schools are on, on um, PennDOT roads, you know, state roads, and they have, you know, all the signage or whatever, but I think there's nothing on the, on the, on the 
road, when you're coming around the bend from, from um, Marietta, or even from, you know, I'm going south, um, school zone. There's no school zone written on the pavement to alert to people that there is a school zone. Because sometimes when you're coming up, when you're going south, when you're going north on Centerville, and you, you know, all of a sudden the school shows up, you know, all the wham up, the school's there. And, you know, people who are not familiar with the area or truckers, or whatever, you know, if they see a school zone written ahead of time on the pavement, might alert them to slow down a little or, or, or whatever. Um, but there's no signage on that, on, on anything around the school. And, you know, believe it or not, I've been complaining about it, not to you, but to the school since my daughter was in elementary school and she's 26. But, you know, this is no sign that says school zone. And, and right now, kids are walking on that on the grassy area from, from the middle school um, up Centerville. And they're in groups of kids and they're walking on the curb, you know, like balancing. Um, so it's, I just think it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, vulnerable, a vulnerable area for okay. the kids. Well, thank you. And I believe we've established a, a target of the completion of the hospital for getting down to a final study on State Road right. and Colt and Centerville Road. Mm -hmm. And if we can move forward, please, uh, we have a number of things on the oh, agenda. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Just one thing, and the speed coming up the hill. Too. I know you're covering that. The speed, the cars that speed up the hill, Centerville Hill. Well, they do the manholes. <laughs> but the thing, the thing is, with those, it's easier for me to make a left hand turn from Chapel Forge onto Centerville right. to go to go north yeah. than it is for me to go make a right hand turn. Sure. Because the cars come barreling up that hill mm -hmm. and you can make the right hand turn and there's no car and all of a sudden it's there. So. Okay. That's just an issue. Thank you. Uh, I'd like now to move on to Colebrook Road. If we could have that report, this one has a higher variance to the posted limit. And I'll refer to Chief Skiles comment, clarifications, and information. Again, aside from what I provided in the re report, uh, I don't think staff has any specific recommendation other than the, the data from the study. Um, we continue to do enforcement out there. We always get violators. Um, the reality is we can't be there every day. And <clears throat> our enforcement is, is uh, will slow things down while we're there. But beyond that, I think that you're gonna have to make a decision as to uh, whether we just, continue to monitor. We don't get specific complaints about it. Um, <laughs> it's one of our straight stretches. It's leaving the township going north into Raffo. Um, yeah, the, the, I think the only real concern there would be the rail crossing. And without that, as I believe the study recommended, we could consider raising the speed limit. Um, you can I, match the speed limit in Raffo Township. As soon as you leave East Hempfield, it goes from uh, 35 to 55. Right. My personal concern would be that if you did that, we have pedestrian crossing at the rail trip. Uh, there's only, I think, I think I counted three driveways in that section of East Tempfield. Right. Uh, there's no crash history, uh, no pedestrians, no bicycles, nothing like that. But if you were to raise the speed limit to 55, which is what it really would be absent that rail, that rail trail crossing. So I'm not making any recommendation to change it, but we just wanted you to be aware of it, that people do exceed 35. And every time we, we do speed enforcement, we prosecute people. It is good to have this in our um, information file. Any comments from the commissioners on this one? How many in, in red pieces of equipment do we have? How many? We have at any one time, how many speed enforcements can we do in the township at one time? Uh, well, it depends. There's NRAD is are the devices that we would put on the, on the roadway. We have we have two sets. Two sets. So we have two sets of those, but every marked car can do speed enforcement in an individual officer. The problem with that is 
you know, if I, if I have one officer out doing speed enforcement, he can stop a car and then he is tied up and creating a citation and then comes back to that location again. When we have a team of officers, we can have uh, several waiting um, and one officer calling out to speed so we can stop you know, a number of cars. <laughs> That's harder to do uh, without spending overtime because I only have four to six officers on the street. I can't use them all to do with speed enforcement at the same time. I just had one question. I have to admit, I don't use the trail very often and I'm not super familiar with the Colbert Parade, but we have like yield pedestrian signs ahead of the trail. I see one, a photo in the uh, report that shows a yellow, it's hard to read, but it looks like a yellow yield sign. It looks like it's just past the trail. So I, I agree that the main concern there is the rail trail. Um, maybe if we had it marked ahead of the trail, that maybe some warning signs. I don't know. Perry may not out there. Perry's on the call. I think he may have a better idea of the sign. Um, I don't. I know that there's sign that there are signs there, but I don't. Yeah, know. I don't know where they're posted. At. Go out that way and look for that. I do not recall. I I just don't remember. Um, being that that's going out of the township, we, we kind of don't drive out that way a lot. So it isn't kind of stuck in my memory as to what's there. So I can check tomorrow and get back to you. And is, uh, did LCPC have something to do with that trailer? Is that all a township effort? That's all county. Okay. I'm wondering if they would have some uh, in, insight from some of their other trails about that. I mean, I guess the question is, could we raise the speed limit or not for that trail? Um, but I can, uh, actually, I can check into it, I guess. Um, I knew some of the people at LCPC that, that work on these things. Since, um, since we're on the uh, Colbert Road, um, have we ever, uh, done any type of study concerning Colbert Road and the uh, Petersburg intersection in terms of signalizing there? Landisville Road. I'm sorry, Landisville Road. I, I think that was before I, I think it was prior to 2010. I think there was, they realigned it. Um, it was prior to 2007. Yeah, it's been a Very long time. Very history on that. It's, it, it's been a long time. It might be time, it might be time to look at that. You know, that we, we, I find that intersection is a very tricky place. And I know there's been accidents there. Um, uh, we, did, we, did look, we did look at that back uh, and, and that, that actually was realigned and reconfigured there. Um, and I know at the time it did not warrant um, a signal. And I, I don't know if volume of traffic today with the side streets even still would warrant a signal there. Again, I don't, I know there's been a couple of minor crashes there. Um, I think there were some pretty nasty ones before they realigned it so that you had some visual, um, better visuals uh, on that. But um, I, again, Chris Bauer would have to do a study on that to determine whether or not a signal could be placed there. I can't imagine it would meet warrants, but possibly it's looking at a four-way stop. Well, there is a four -way. Well, that's true, four-way stop. Yeah, and I think when we looked at Lidditz Road at 72, it met warrants on Roots Day, Roots day but not other days. And it, it has to be a so many days in a week and just one day a week event end up. But it has become a fairly popular alternate route north to Mannheim and beyond. Um, so it might be time to, I mean, I, I, I would be in favor of maybe um, taking a look at the traffic counts there just to see where, where they are. And it might, if we go any further than that, we might want to wait until the auction is fully operational. I don't know if they are yet or not. Well, I'll look that up again. But I think we should. We'll add it to the list. Okay. Yes, thank you. Do some preliminary studies. Okay, the next item is Nisley Road. And that happens to be the first entry on the Traffic Commission report, which I skipped over. Um, in the agenda, and 
there's uh, one I think we've counted as a bit of a success um, in that, and Chief, maybe you want to just summarize that as you. Um, yeah, I don't know that that uh, I would categorize it as a success. <laughs> I think if you look at the if you look at the, the data now, I have, would have to apologize the data that I gave you for the the uh, follow up study. On the first page, it has the, the original study from back in June. And then uh, Perry's crew put the markings on the roadway. Uh, and then we did the, the follow-up study in August. Now, with our new equipment, it wasn't set up initially to do both lanes. I mean, it, it's, it's collecting the data for both lanes, but I can't break this out to say what's north and what's south or north and south. But overall, the averages, they changed a little bit. The average speed went from 34 and 37 to 33. Um, and the 85th percentile speed uh, is a 39. So there, I would say there's very marginal uh, difference from the markings. Uh, and even if we went out and did it again and separated the lanes, I mean, this is giving you an average of both lanes. I don't see it as, as having done a whole lot. So I would throw it back at you again and say, what kind of speed calming are you willing to do on a hill and what, what uh, <clears throat> would be prudent on a hill? That's out of my area of expertise. Mr. Weaver, do you have any particular <coughs> If you live right beside it, I think it seemed at first that it did help, but I guess it's one of those things where people get used to seeing it on the road, just kind of forget about it. So it appears that it really didn't long term didn't really make a whole lot of difference. So and we still have speed. Yeah, we still have some speeding. It's uh, it's not exactly what's posted, of course, which it should be. Um, I don't know of other solutions than speed bumps or tables, and then on a on an incline such as that section of roadway, I'm not so sure those are well advised, um, especially if we would have them up in the winter season. And if we don't have them up in the winter season, it's a question of how effective we are in, in trying to approach the subject. So, um, I mean, your next step in the process if you feel that there's a, an adequate concern to move forward would be to contact the traffic engineer and have him look at alternatives that could be used on that roadway, given the fact that it's an incline and everything else. Uh, every time we send something to the traffic engineer though, there is cost, so. We are currently awaiting a report from McMahon on one of our other roadways. Uh, I, I don't think, well, Spring Valley, technically. Yes, um, he did Spring Valley. He did Spring Valley on a temporary nature. He didn't do a permanent solution because we wanted something out there as quickly as possible. I thought that there was some kind of write up by McMahon about this theory. He looked at it initially, and, and the, initial, the recommendation he made was. Yeah. Try road markings and see if that impact. Yeah. He don't even do anything in, in depth. Yeah. yeah, I didn't think. I didn't think it was. A, in fact, I don't even know that it was would have been considered an engineering study. I think. No, I just, think it was just right. He just gave some feedback. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that sounds right. So we could send him. The next step would be send him the data that we have, and tell him we still have a problem. And do you have any solutions? Given the parameters. What's the, what's the recommendation of the commission? I'll, I'll make a motion to have uh, McMahon look into the additional speed common possibility for, for this lane road. Is there a second? I second that. We have a motion and a second. I'll call for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 It is three to zero. So, Mr. Schweitzer, if you kindly pursue that with the man, and we'll see if we can get even more of an improvement there. 
And now, uh, why don't we deal with the Centerville Road that we've added? For now. Do we have any slides we can look at on that? Can you speak to it, Chief Skiles? I can give you some, some real basic information. Uh, and did you get, do you all have the report? I, and I apologize, I just got the results back and tried to squeeze it in here. Well, it's actually Spring Valley. It is Spring Valley. It's not Centerville, it's Spring Valley. I, I don't have a copy of that. Did you not want to add Centerville? No, what was that in the Spring Valley? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm in the okay. Agenda. So this is what we're adding to the agenda. Yes. Oh, I got it. All right. So this this is the study that was done after this three speed bumps were put in place. Okay. And of course, there's significant decreases in speed. So you, so your next step again would be the these were put in as a temporary nature to get something out there because of the high speeds and the, the level of residential in the area. So the next step would be to go back to the engineer and say, okay, those worked. Can you do, give us something permanent for that for this situation? The only thing that I can't give you an answer for because I don't know, um, if you look at the numbers, it was about 2,500 $2, less cars, vehicles total um, on that on that street, I have no idea why. Um, speed bumps are. It made me people just don't want to go speed bumps anymore, <laughs> which solves some problem. You know, we when we did Farmingdale Road, the speed bumps had an unintended consequence of pushing the traffic into other neighborhoods where there wasn't traffic before. Um, I don't believe that's the case here because there's only one alternative to using Spring Valley Road, and it's pretty far out of the way to avoid them, but I wouldn't be able to tell you where those cars went, but clearly the, the bumps impacted the speeds. So I, I, I can kind of tell you by the, uh, the number of complaints that I received. <laughs> um, uh, some of them were for, some of them were against, um, but as to the speaking where some of the vehicles went, I did get calls from people who live in the development off Nolt Road and they said, People are going up Nolt and turning into, uh, I do not remember the name of the street, but it brings you above the S curve. And they said they've, they've noticed uh, an increase in traffic through there. So I, I don't know if that's the next place you're going to get speeding complaints is down through there. Um, but that's where some of the traffic may have gone. And then typically once people find out that they're there, um, they will just avoid the road and go elsewhere. That, that is the unintended consequence of, of taking a, what is considered a collector road and slowing the speeds down on it, uh, as the chief alluded to with Farmingdale Road. That was the intended consequence, was to reduce the speed. And, and, that, and that was accomplished. That was accomplished. Yet, those that are intent on speeding may take their speeding elsewhere. Um, is anyone here in the audience here for uh, Spring Valley Road? No, they didn't come for Spring Valley. I guess what I would like to defer, I would recommend we defer until fall when we remove the bumps and then see if in fact there has been anything gained or if it reverts to what it was before we did the bumps. I don't think that we need to do a study for that once they come up, but we can do it again. We can do a third one, but my knowing motorists and well, not just in the township everywhere, they're gonna, speeds are gonna go right back to where they were. People aren't gonna slow down. I mean, I mean the, the fact that traffic, some portion of the, tra of the traffic volume may have been pushed onto another road, um, you know, may be sig significant. It, it may not be significant. There, there, may, there may have been less travel on that road. It doesn't mean that, that because they're using these other roads that they're speeding on those roads. Um, so, you know, I, I think we've 
it looks to me like we're, we accomplished what we set out here um, in response to a problem. Um, we weren't going to make these permanent until the spring anyway, correct? We were not going to create a permanent solution until spring. Right, right. What that solution is, we don't know yet. But it would likely be speed bumps. That would probably be the less expensive solution. And what, what would it? I guess we don't, we don't need to get into it, do it now, but. Um, well, what would be another alternative? Road narrowing? Uh, Chicanes. 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 That's basically narrowing the road in. Yeah. yeah. To make it appear narrower so cars go slower. Slow, right. Well, that's going to make people drive slower, which is also what speed bumps do. So it may still be the same difference. I mean, I mean, I don't know that it's necessarily a bad thing that cars use other public streets. The problem would be is if they're using other public streets and speeding, yeah. and they are public streets. Right. So one of the accepted uh, solutions to crime is to displace it so that it gets displaced and displaced and displaced until it goes away. I'm not a traffic engineer, but if you displace the, the total volume of vehicles from one problem, you minimize the problem there. But again, I can go to engineering school. Right. And the only other option is to be nothing, and that's not really an option. It's not a good option. So well, our original intent was to watch this till winter. So let's uh, table this until we have that point in time. And uh, this uh, this was one of the more significant areas, I believe, that we've been addressing. So um, could we? mid-October, put another set of NROD out and get some data before the October commission meeting, maybe? This, well, the NROD is the speed violating. That's the equipment we use to, to apprehend speeders. Okay. You mean to, to do another study? Yeah. We could. But the problem with keep repeating these studies is that the ones that you're telling me to do aren't getting done because they keep getting pushed down the list because mm -hmm. we keep repeating studies. I can do, we can put them wherever you want. But I have to, I mean, we started a priority list. Yeah. The priority, the priority list keeps getting changed. And you're not going to see a difference. I mean, yeah. I mean, we'll take them off and I, we take this, the tables off when it's time to plow. I think it's just a matter of time until the speeds go right back up where they were. Right. Uh, so we, we can certainly put them out. But we have, we have a, a significant number of studies that we need to do before. We get to the to the winter. When you say the priority list, is that your traffic commission report? The order in which they're entered there. Well, that, on that last page, that list uh, keeps getting longer. Every uh, every yes, meeting that we have, that list gets longer. And there we go. Yeah. So we can do it again, but then some of these other ones that you asked me to do are going to get bumped down further. So because uh, we've done Spring Valley, I think four. Uh, in these springs, I think we've done that one four times. Um, so people want to study for various reasons when they don't like the results and they want us to do it again, uh, but at a different time or a different cool part of the street. And I, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Um, um, that what we can find out, I think, would be if the total number of vehicles goes back up or if it stays lower, that'd be kind of interesting. I know to try to get something for the October meeting, I think it's going to be too soon because once you take the bumps away, you need to give time for people to realize that the bumps are no longer there and then either adjust their driving habits or not. So I think you have to take them, take the bumps out and then give it about, I don't know, a month or a couple of weeks. Yeah, I don't then think we, we won't have the time between now and the next meeting to, right. to put, put them out for a week. We already, and Perry would know better, but I think that that there are sets that are out now and then they go back out again next week. And then and then I can get the results about a week after that to try to get them to use. So I would think more like November. Okay. Um, in the interest of managing time, we have guests and I want to know if there's something they have come for, especially this evening, and I want to address it before our time expires. So I just have one question. On well, you've already had the floor. I know, but, but you're not considering corridor construction. 
because I think once you start the Senate corridor construction, Dorcia and, and, well, and um, the Spring here. Valley is going to be inundated with detouring. So yeah. doing this traffic stuff now is not going to really reflect what's going to happen during construction, just like the hospital construction. You know, we have to wait until that's done. So I think making major changes before, you know, the corridor, you know, when does that start? We're not really, we're not really going to make any changes. The next step in this process, as I understand it, is that um, we're going to ask our traffic engineer to come up with traffic calming right. options for Spring Valley Road based upon the study that we have in place now. Yes. Okay. The, the temporary bumps will come out for the winter. Yes. Right. Okay. I mean, I guess uh, I don't see why we wouldn't put the ball in it into our traffic engineer's court and have him study things and base a recommendation or provide a recommendation back to us uh, right. later, later in the year. Yeah, rather than staff. Okay. Okay. Uh, sir? Okay. Why did you come this evening? Well, yeah. Please Unfortunately, your, I, please state your name. And okay, my name is Michael Warner. I'm here with my wife, Teresa. We live at 804-804 Hillair Road. We're township residents now for 24 years. Actually, as of this month. Uh, we recently had our fourth crash incident on our property. Uh, third on our property, one on our neighbor's property uh, since we've been there. Uh, the issue is a, a curve on, on Dorsey Road near the corner of Hillair, our corner of Hillair, there's two corners of Hillair. The cars come southbound on uh, Dorsey Road and they fail to make that curve. Uh, the latest one drove through our neighbor's yard, uh, broke off our fence, uh, so we've incurred damage. Uh, the previous ones, one, a guy missed the curve he drove up, up the guy wire that holds a utility pole there, flipped his car over on its roof, closed the road, knocked the power out to the neighborhood. There was another one before that that came up the guy wire and ripped the guy wire out. The other one drove through the neighbor's yard and took out the shrubbery on his yard. Um, so, unfortunately, I guess I'm here to ask well, to find out what the procedure is to get a speed bump, a speed table, traffic calming. I've heard that I've heard the terms going around here. And I guess unfortunately again we may be looking at a speed study or traffic. Study. These events, how do they relate to the last 23 years? Is this something that has just occurred recently or is there a history? Well, the latest one just occurred here in the beginning of a week ago. Okay. And it was investigated by the police department. But the other three. Um, it's been spaced out over those 20, those uh, oh, okay. 24. Years. Okay. So it's been going on for, yeah. and I don't know how long it was going on before we were there. The, the development's been there a long time. Sure. Um, but the other thing that there's, it seems like there's more and more. Um, young children being moved into the area. They walk along that road to get to the school bus stop, to and from the school bus. People walk along there, you know, exercise walk where they're walking their dogs or whatever. Myself, when I mow the lawn there, it can get pretty, uh, pretty scary. It's a 25 mile an hour posted speed zone. The curve is marked coming both directions at 20 mile per hour. And uh, I think it's a pretty rare occasion that, that, occasion that those speed limits are being. And I would, I would submit that this is a large part of cut through traffic. Cut through traffic, taking a shorter way 
from A to B, from Marietta Avenue to uh, Spring Valley. I'm wondering if I'm wondering if we're going to have to take some of our collectors and put a barricade in the middle of them and close them in one direction, or so that everybody has to go to a collector to get out of town. I'm um, trying to be humorous, of course, but uh, I'm not sure if you. If you were to be attending this meeting for the last year and beyond that, you find we have these issues just without ceasing. Um, well, this is one that we haven't been talking about recently, though. So I appreciate your making us aware of it. Well, this has been going through my mind for a long time. It's something ought to be done. Whenever I'm out there, you know, mowing the grass and watching the kids go to the to the school bus or whatever. It, it's well, we could do a study as we've done on these others. Again, we have the list. The folks in the back, are you here for the same? No, they're here for something else. Okay. But, but this, is the, this is the first stop in addressing the issue. My first city? No, no, no. The first stop in addressing the issue is coming here before us, making us aware of your concern. We okay. appreciate you doing it. Okay, yeah, I wasn't aware of the procedure. Right? Yeah, and, and and most likely, you know, we'll talk it over with staff and, and uh, the police department, but most likely a speed study would be the ne next step before anything is done. Okay. And we do have a lot of that, that type of thing on our plate. Might take a little bit of time, but we'll get it on the, we'll, we'll discuss it, probably perhaps get it on the list, and then move forward from there. And we'll, and, we will attempt to let you know, but you could also check back with us too. Um, okay. Which would be fine also. Okay. Okay. And could I, could I add from the police department standpoint too, and I'm not, not to make a pun, but we'll put it on our radar um, <laughs> and we'll, we'll get out there and we'll do some enforcement. Okay. I know, that, I know that years ago we got a lot of complaints and we did a lot of enforcement there and then it kind of died down. So okay. these things seem to, Creep up and they come back and then they go away and they come back again. So, this is the first time that it actually is going to cost me money because it damaged my property. And, um, other times it took the power out and things like that. It's an inconvenience. But this vehicle did not stop. I'm sorry. This vehicle did not stop. That's correct. It did not stop. It came through the neighbor's yard, took out my fence, took out a shrub. And continued through my yard. When we do traffic studies, the, the crash history is usually a five year period. So we would have only picked up in, in a crash history study this most recent one, the ones that happened. Not that they're not important, but we wouldn't see them automatically. But you living there, you know the history. Okay. If, if you could sign into our sign in sheet and provide a contact number, let's see right here on the end of the table, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Okay. No. Okay. Very well. Uh, Ma'am, in the back, you appear to want to address us. Please come forward. Sure. Great. Well, thank you for having me. Right. I didn't know we were going to get on the agenda or not. So, but I'm sorry, you have a lot of traffic issues. <laughs> so thank you for um, your uh, commitment to working our roadways here. Um, your my name, name and address? Sure, my name is Alyssa Feather and um, my address is 760 Stony Battery Road. Uh, so we're here uh, with our neighbor as well, Don Flaherty. And um, again, we're here to address concerns about the traffic speed on uh, Stony Battery Road. Um, so uh, we've been noticing, um, you know, higher volumes of uh, tractor trailer traffic that increases the noise um, <clears throat> along our roadway, as well as really high extreme speeds um, and also uh, difficulty like even pulling in our driveways because we'll be like slowing down to turn into our driveway and cars are like blaring on their horn for us to speed up. You know, type of thing, not realizing that we're turning. Um, we recently had our mailbox taken out, and um, additionally, uh, my uh, daughter uh, also catches the bus at the front of our house as well. And um, cars are very um, when the school bus stops. You know, they've been coming up like very close to the school bus, like 
not stopping, you know, farther back as they should because the, the excess of speed that they have. Um, so, uh, anything else? Can you give me a landmark on Stony Battery where you live? Um, so between Nolt and um, and, and what? And or in a, what? Is it north? And of Road. North of Nolt towards Salon. Yes. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank yes. You. Yes. So um, I don't know if any previous traffic studies have been done. If I, I can interject here, we have we have that section of roadway on the list. Oh, great! So Perfect. We're trying to be proactive because we know yeah. there's more traffic out there right now, and, and uh, it should be coming up in the relatively near future. Oh, perfect! Thank you. Yeah, and I would just say that there's a lot of um, walkers and bikers along the road as well. So anything that uh, can be done to help help them as well would be great. Ma'am, I, I couldn't hear that discussion, but it's been brought to my attention. You actually live in West Hempfield Township. Correct, we do, okay. but the adjoining road, it, you know, the road is the barrier between us. So when we were asking about um, who to talk to, they said that we should address both townships because of the shared road. That's fine. Okay. And our study was going to do both both lanes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just add to that. Nathan uh, Pokeline, uh, Alyssa is my wife. Um, I think uh, talking with some of our friends in the community, whenever uh, Church Street had the blinking light at Nolt and Church, um, it was very much welcomed because there was much traffic coming in and out of that, and they were able to turn, make left turns to go north or south on Church Street at Nolt. And I know you guys have future plans to improve Church Street. And the fear is, is that um, with many roads in these central townships, they are crossroads going north and south, uh, that a lot of that traffic is going to get moved over to a stony battery. Um, and with the increase, the businesses recently moving in over there, uh, and it's definitely a shortcut from 30 to 283, um, that right now we might be seeing an increase in speed and traffic right now, but in the coming year when Church Street is under uh, construction, that that is gonna most likely double as we heard that, you know, you work on one spot and on the unintended consequence in another spot. Um, and then just to comment back on the Colebrook Road, uh, we are a biking family, we like to bike and we use the rail to trails. And uh, I've also traveled Colebrook on my daily commute. Um, and I would advise to uh, make sure that the speed limit is posted for the the, um, the rail stations there, because uh, I know people do go fast there, and with kids crossing the road and everything, we usually have to wait until a car actually stops to let us pass, so we have that visual contact in a stopped car barricade. Yeah. Thank you. Would you please sign in so sure. we have your record? As a side note, just to let you know that the township is planning a trail system between uh, Nolt and Coffin. So there will be a loop that you'll be able to use and get on some other trails as you move around since you are family that travels that way. Okay, thank you. Chief. Uh, the only thing I, the only other one I had up here was Milmar, and I can give you an abbreviated version of that. We just finished the study on Milmar. Um, I think that's more of a perception issue. The average speed's 25 miles an hour, uh, 85th percentile is 26 miles an hour. So I think that's their outlier speeds that people are seeing there. And I, I'll present the study at the next meeting. Two, two quick follow ups. Um, in Spring Drive, we've done another, another study there, or we are in the process of We're in the process one. of doing one right now. In the process now. Okay. Uh, but the, that's not on the report. It's it's not. No, okay. it's it's still out the street. Okay. We moved it. it the, the issue the last time was that it was put up and it was on a curve. So we moved it off the curve and now it's on a straightaway. So okay. hopefully okay. by October, October meeting, you should have that. Great. And then the other the other thing I would uh, uh, suggest 
is that well, I think all this is great information for us from a decision making standpoint. I think the uh, the, uh, the only other element that that, that I would like to see and I would find valuable would be um, uh, a list of the accidents in the township on, on a monthly basis. You you provide a it's going to be a long list. Well, I I, I guess the one. Take out the state room, stay out the you know, 230, 283, and 30. Yeah, take 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 the take the right, take the state 230, 283, and 30 out of the mix and just our township roads. Right. Would it be more beneficial if I provided you with say a top 10 list of the, the most access? Because I mean I will give you a, a pamphlet every month of the, that's one of our, our top calls that we respond to. I can give it to you. I don't think it's gonna have a lot of value to you unless I break it down somehow. I can talk to you off okay outside well, let's here. Do that. Let's do that. Let's talk with that let's just talk. We'll, we'll follow up on that later. Okay. Understood. You have any other questions for me? No. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have generally covered the agenda. Um, we have not discussed Shank Road, Covered Bridge. Uh, briefly, I will report from the uh, Public Works Group meeting. We have determined to request that the traffic engineers of Rafo Township be our traffic engineers and analyze the situation and try to come up with a solution that uh, is beneficial to both townships, the bridge, and all users of that area. And with that, uh, unless there's anything else from the commissioner, we have. Ma'am, I understood you were with another group. Maybe I misunderstood. Come you forward. There, or I am, but there was one other issue that wasn't. Come covered. forward. So you're okay sending Shank Road to the engineer? The traffic commission is okay with sending the Shank Road to yeah, the engineer. We, let's make that a motion. Sure. Motion for Mr. Weaver. Second. Second, Mr. Thank Bennett. You. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes three to nothing. Thank you. Ma'am, your name, please. Uh, Dawn Flake Hardy, and I'm living at 750 Stony Battery Road, which is also west, but we're also dealing with them. Um, the one thing that has come up with both of the police officers in both township sides that I've talked to is that um, Stony Battery Road from uh, Route 30 at Mountville to QBC is supposed to be posted for the size trucks that are allowed in there. And the end of road that we're on, those big trucks are not supposed to be there. And I can't see any place where those signs are posted. So if that's accurate, I'd like to see them posted because they're building 90 truck bays across the street from my house and we need to slow them down. I know we're not gonna eliminate them, but we need to slow them down. So between Route 30 and QVC, there's a restriction on trucks. There supposedly was passed quite some time ago when it was supposed to be marked. What size trucks were allowed in there? So we had done an extensive study. The chief stepped out. I, I don't recall what that study showed in terms of ordinances or that I, I, It was new to me. I only just talked yeah. to them last week, and they told me about that. And I mean, it, it, east and west both told me the same thing. So, it, yeah. But I, apparently, it was. Well, what um, would be the location? I, I don't know. Weight limit, but there's nothing there that it's a straight way. I think it was, it was actually designed. It was, it was designed to create a truck traffic lane. When Apparently, it was from Route 30 to QBC, they were allowed, but the rest of it, because I mean, that's a, I, I don't understand. I mean, I understand why they do it because it's a shortcut for them between 30 and 283. But um, the size of trucks that go in through there and turn left at Landisville onto Harrisburg Pike is crazy. I mean, we live there, we see it all the time. So. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that we have a documentation that there is a truck route there. We, we have restriction. a limitation agreement with the 701 and 791 properties. Six hundred one, seven hundred one, and seven ninety one have restrictions to what it turns out. And that is. Okay. And that's for those properties, but it doesn't exclude anybody else who is coming up. Right. 
Uh, if I could briefly just comment on the Stony Battery Road thing, I was involved in that back when that came to be. And when QVHC went for expansion, um, they had petitioned uh, the state and the township to actually allow for bigger trucks from Route 30 all the way over uh, to QVC. Uh, and the road was actually built at, back at that time to handle uh, those size trucks. I don't know that there was ever an official study that I could find here in the township. Uh, I wasn't working for the township then, but um, I, I do know that the road was built and constructed so that QVC could get larger trucks there. Let me, let me conclude. Yeah, this our end. End. We have a truck study that is in process at this time with a goal, I would say, for year end to come to some plan of managing large truck traffic in East Hemfield. Uh, the logic is if we're making restrictions with approvals from the North Road North area, that it should apply to all truck traffic. And I think that'll become part of that study and we can we can analyze it that way. So thank you for that concern. Um, we, we've been sensitive to the Salunga, as I would call it, area of Stony Battery Road. Yeah, I understand it's such a problem because the police officers that I talked to said, doesn't matter when they stop people, the, they the people challenge it and a lot of times don't even get charged because of it, because they, they're vague on where the dividing line is. You know, when I'm getting run over trying to get my newspaper or my, my mail, it's not vague as far as I'm concerned. They're just speeding, they're going way too fast. The roadway is a, is a concern, but also the intersection where it comes to Harrisburg Pike oh, that's is huge too, yeah. not able to manage that large traffic. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. And with that, uh, I would look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion for Mr. Bennett, second from the chair. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all.